Hey everybody. Happy, happy weekend. Uh, at least that's when I'm filming this. It's a weekend and by overwhelming demand you guys asked for a tips and tricks. So I'm going to bring that together for you guys today. I am in the process of spraying a bunch of stuff so you're probably going to get segments of me spraying a bunch of different things but I'm going to try my best to incorporate these tips and tricks as I'm going along. The first one is just working with uh, a piece of stencil that you're going to set down on the bait and the number one question asked here is uh, how do you keep it steady if you're just using a piece of stencil you just pretty much you want to put your hand somewhere on this bait that makes sense and hold it down and do one even spray you can even flip the bait around if you need to just to find the right area to work in on this bait so I've got some this is a sassy gill deal right here and I've already got most of the colors on we're just gonna finish this up for the customer and I'm using if you guys see the way I've got my hand on this bait I'm using my middle finger here as kind of a stabilizer and I'm I've got this situated between my forefinger my thumb and that middle finger is also acting as a steadier so we're gonna pull this up and then just run it one time down you want to make sure that you get the paint on dark enough to where it makes sense and then lift that up and there is your stenciled pattern I'm going to come back and do the same thing with the other side the other bait the other thing that you have to be mindful of when you're using paper stencils uh, like this is an art tools it came from a, an art tool is that this is why I keep my paper towel down here and that's another quick tip um, make sure you have a paper towel with you as you go through especially so you can blot down and it just paper towels are great paper is okay but paper towels have that absorbency that just a piece of paper doesn't have and it's gonna pull the paint off of it so that you can reuse this a little bit quicker so we're gonna do the same thing I'm using my middle finger to stable myself on the back of this on the tail eyelet and then set it down the way you want it to look on this bait get it lined up and spray it once I'm going from the tail up heavy enough to where it's going to go through and then lift it up and that's it make sure you don't slide coming off and if you need to go back and do any sort of little detail do it quickly so there's that little detail that I missed on the other one and uh, it's on the other it's on the other side of the bait but there you go so just use your fingers to stabilize yourself on that hold it as steady as you can and move quickly throughout there and that's tip number one tip number two is simple but it's kinda along the same lines so a lot of people use heat guns, a lot of people use hair dryers to heat set the paint after it's on their bait. The biggest question here is, uh, or the biggest issue, the concern is, my paint is, is cracking. So the best way to take care of that is instead of holding your heat source straight down and frying your bait, do it like you were drying your hair, move it around move this around as long as you have oscillation in that hot air your paint's going to be a lot less likely to crack while it's on that lure so just give it a quick heat set move that around and you're going to be 80 percent less likely to have cracked paint unless that's the look you're going for and if that's the case then enjoy I've got both of these done. The second question is getting the shadow on the gill. Some people like to cut around and do the shadow going inward. I like to have my shadow on the back side of the gill plate. So normally what I'll do, and I'm going to reload some black or some black magenta in here, is that I'll cut a little piece. And a lot of the stuff that I do, and you guys probably know that at this point, are hand cut stencils. So I'm going to pull the pressure up here real quick, dump off the rest of this brown that I was just using to do the detailing and the sassy gale. And we're going to pick up some black magenta. 
because less and less am I using absolute black to do detailing anymore. I really like the, the more natural tonal colors that you get. And we got to bring this back down and get set to spray. Just pick this up. We're gonna do. We're gonna go kill two birds in one stone. Uh, what you'll see here is that I have created the the gill plate shading by cutting a little section out of this. I also added the ear flap. I just cut a little little swatch out of this. So that kind of gives you two and one on the tool here that you're going to be using. Very low pressure, extremely low pressure for something like this. And again, you're just going to steady yourself with that stencil. And come in. And when you're shading, you want more paint on your tool, on your stencil, than you do on the bait itself. And just finish that out. And again, we'll use our paper towel here as well. There we go. Make sure it's coming out evenly. And then right behind that, I'm going to set this down and get that ear flap on. So your finished product is going to look something like that. Come back around and do the other side just to show you the same effect. And then we're going to move on off of this bait onto the next tip and trick. But just again, you're going to lay that stencil down. And we're going to flip it over for this side. Just real light, just to get that shading in. Then bring it back. Line it up with the uh, gill plate. You can usually see between where, where your hole is here, you can usually see where you need to lay this down. And there you have it. You've got your shading in and you have a really cool little ear flap on this gill. On to the next tip. This is the next tip and trick, and this might be a little bit basic for some of you guys, but if you're just starting out, then you might not know this. Uh, one thing that I like to do to make sure that my eyes stay put is not only am I going to put the eyes in before I clear coat, and I'm saying that because just the other day I was, uh, I was in my YouTube channel, and you know how they give you recommendations. Well, about three years ago, there was an FLW Inside Strike King that came up, and it was actually really informative. If you can find it, I'm going to try and link that in the description below because it's actually pretty interesting to, to watch how Strike King baits are made, and you don't normally get to see that, especially with a bigger company. But this one actually did, and um, one of the things that I noticed is that they clear-coated before they dropped the eyes on. And if you look, and I happen to have a Strike King right here, these eyes are definitely put on after the bait has been clear coated because the eyes are just kind of floating there and what will happen is especially if a fish hits it hard or it's a toothy critter it'll knock the eyes out so in order to kind of prevent that one of the things that I like to do is I'll put a drop in each eye of these uh, of super glue and then I'll clear coat it so not only is it protected by the uh, clear coat but it has some some added protection in it as well and let's just go ahead and drop these eyes in uh, I can answer questions while I'm doing this I know you guys are gonna be like where do you get these eyes well um, when you get them from when you get the the blanks uh, that are that are duo based from dinger he provides eyes but you can also find them if you know where to look online um, some of the places that I've found eyes for a pretty good price have been AliExpress, the Alibaba.com. Um, they have it's and it's it's Asian. I know a lot of the stuff is produced in China, um, but these little guys fit perfectly 
and then I'll just take because you don't want to get glue all over your fingers and the eyes will stick and it'll start looking like a mess but I'll take my little knife that I use and I use this to clean up eyelets afterwards but I just drop that and kind of smooth it around until that glue takes hold and once that glue takes hold you're golden but that fits this that fits perfectly the other thing that I want to do while I have this little knife out kind of goes one right into the other let's keep it clean so you know I'm a big proponent of taping off as much of the bill when you have a bill on a bait as possible. It just gives it a much cleaner appearance. It's more professional if you guys are going to be selling your baits. just looks better all the way around. So I'll take my little pen knife, in this case it's a Swiss Army knife, and I'll just kind of walk around the bill and look for any inconsistencies anywhere where that paint might have just kind of bled a little bit underneath my, um, my tape on the bill and then I'll just gently once the paint is dry and it's got to be once the paint is dry you can't do it while it's wet because it just looks like junk it smears it um, and before the clear coat goes on so just just kind of gently pull that any excess paint off that you have and I'll do that with this one as well but just just clean your baits up it's it's gonna do miles better for you and it looks better and your clients are going to love you for it in the next part of this journey we're going to feature this frog here and this is one of those gill through flow water flow technology type frogs um, very similar to other frogs that I'm sure you guys have seen on the market this blank comes from I want to say I got this one from Scheltz overseas it is a pretty good, pretty pretty decent walker. It's a pretty good floater. There's some pretty decent water displacement, and it does behave in the same manner as those other baits you've got, you guys have seen on the market. Uh, I like to put in a 4.5 or 5 millimeter eye on this, and I'm going to show you a little trick after we're done spraying this. We're going to go start to finish on this. This is going to be a pretty easy build. It's going to be a little different because um, you know me. I, I can't do anything normal. Um, but it's going to be cool. So we're going to start by coating the entire thing black. And this is going to be like a reverse frog pattern on this. But you're going to see how it comes out. I think you're going to like it. So we're just going to, I've got some black magenta loaded in here. And that, uh, that will give it a really good effect after we're done. So we're just going to coat the entire bait. Except for the mouth. I'm going to stay away from the mouth. I'm only going to do one layer on the inside of the mouth at the very end because the more, as tip number one, the more paint you load in this mouth, the harder it is to keep your clear coat off of it because the clear coat has a tendency to want to stick to the paint. So the thinner the paint you use in this mouth, the better off you're going to be. Just that's one good tip for you guys, for you frog painters out there. So we've got this coated with black magenta. I'm going to do a, a heat set on this real quick and come back. So on the belly, we're going to add this pearl lime. And you can see what's happening. It, obviously with the detail black magenta, it does turn that darker. And we're going to go right up the sides until we run out of paint. And we're going to stay wet. And I'm going to load, I've got a little bit of Red Oxide Candy 2.0 that I've mixed in with some Pearlized Purple. So it's a 50-50 combination. It's 50% Candy 2.0 that's pre-reduced. You need a 40-30 reducer. Uh, it's like an additive that goes in there. And it, it, since it's a Createx Wicked line, um, I like to stay with what they recommend. So again, this is a, it's a pre-mixed candy 2.0. I'll show you the color. Red Oxide 4663, and that has been cut 50-50 with the 4030, which is your candy additive. And it just, it basically it gives it a better flow, it sprays a lot better. And then I've also added to that mix Pearl Purple which is 
5301. And that's going to go on the top half of this. And what you're going to get is almost the same effect that you would get with a really high quality, expensive, run that out, um, color shifting, like a DuPont paint. You can just see how, oh man, that's so full of pearlescent. Look at that. Can you guys see that? I mean, it's just, it's yummy. It's a really cool color. This is a high, high spray. So my, uh, I'm cranking, where are we at here? I'm cranking about 32. Just give that a real good coat. It can be heavy because you want this to bleed into that pearl lime. Okay, now this is air dried long enough to where I'm going to go ahead. I mean, it's it's not getting off of my fingers. It's a little bit tacky, but I want to go ahead and heat set this. It's a little cool. I've got the roll ups open today. It is a um, unseasonably cool day in May for the South Y'all. Usually we're blazing. We're in the 80s by this time of the year. But I'm just going to go ahead and heat set this a little bit. Only because we're going to start layering in. Now that finish that you saw really, really come out and shine, it will happen again once we get that clear coat on it. But we're going to do a couple of things to it first. Um, I really like, I've really been digging on these patterns lately. And it's, I could probably do a more distinct pattern. This is a snake skin. It's a piece of a snake skin um, stencil that I've kind of been using a lot lately. But one thing that I want to do is I want to add white onto this now. So we're just going to use the outlines of this pattern to uh, do some really cool effects on this bait. And yes, you can use your primer white at a lower um, pressure. So I'm just going to load some some of that white primer in there. Turn my pressure down from 30 to under 10. I'm probably between 5 and five and 8 psi. I, I don't want it to clog in there. Just have to play with it till it's coming out steady. And the, the big part of this that I want you guys to grasp is not the actual spray because it, it, this is a cool pattern and I hope you guys are going to take advantage of doing similar things like this. I don't actually want this to come behind this gill plate here because we're going to add the little ear holes, the tympanic membrane as it were. I'm just going to lay in and then as we come back, there we go. So we have just a little bit of a dotting pattern on that. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just kind of move this up as we go. Remember I said in the last section of this, if you're using a freehand stencil, try and get and you don't have to do the whole spray because a lot of the times your bait that you're using is curved and unless you're good enough to just move the stencil with the airbrush as you're going back and I've done that sometimes I'm not going to do that here I'm just going to do it in, in segments and then a little further back and then a little further back and you can see the effect that that's given on that now to really make this cool, I'm going to bring this pattern to the back and then flip it. Blot this down on the paper towel. do the same thing on the other side. Just 
just lay this down as steady as you can. Just shoot it once. If you go back over it, that's when you have a tendency to move because you're trying to move with it. And then do the same thing one more time. Okay, so I've, the only thing that I did off camera, and it's very time consuming, is I went back and I overlaid gold across all the white that was down. We still have that bright frog green on the bottom and that pearl lime. And now I've got fluorescent red. It's not pink, it's fluorescent red. And I'm doing one thin coat on the edges of the gill plates and the very top edge of the mouth and inside. But remember I said it's got to be thin because the clear coat has a tendency to want to stick to the paint. The more paint you have loaded in here, the thinner these holes are going to get. So we're getting ready to put the eyes on. We're going to find some cool eyes for this frog. And then we're going to clear coat it for you guys. And that's the number one question is how do I keep all the clear coat and the gunk, especially with KBS, out of these gill through holes. Point where we're going to be putting some eyes on this thing and you want five millimeter or preferably if you want the entire eye to be round and in the center of this you'd want to go with like a 4.5 millimeter for this particular type of frog or popper. I'm going to be using some Jetson eyes and I, I think I've decided on what I want to do but I'm not a hundred percent sure so of the five millimeters that I have left of his, I've got blues, I've got greens, I've got the orange here, which eh, doesn't really go with this purple and gold and, but I do, the green could accent what I already have, or I have, this is not a Jetson, this is just a regular lizard eye, I have these reds. I think red would stand out, but I also like these greens. I think I'm going to go with a green. Now, the one thing that I want to do here, because the this is a 5, and I said I usually like a little bit smaller than a 5, so in order to get these to fit in very well, I need to take just a little bit of, uh, of size off of this thing. So I'm going to take out my X-Acto Life. And that's another little trick and tip. If you want the eyes to fit really well and they're a little bit too big and you don't want to just shove them in there because it's, it's not going to look right. It's going to hang out over the edge and you stand a chance of them moving around when you clear coat this. Get an X-Acto knife. This X-Acto knife is definitely my friend and I'm going to bring the camera down. Sorry about the noise that happens with that. But basically what we're going to do here is I'm going to take about that much Oh, got to get it in frame. I'm going to take about that much off of the bottom of this eye. And I also need to figure out if I'm going to have these horizontally or if I'm going to have these vertically. So I think I'm going to use the pupil horizontally on this one to, to closer represent a frog versus a lizard or a snake. So we're going to move this around just a little bit here. If I can get it down, this shouldn't take much time at all. And then I'm just going to bring my X-Acto knife blade down and take just that much off. And I'm going to show you, all right, now let me show you what this looks like. Pull this up. I'm streaming 91X, which is out of San Diego. So shout out to my buddy Pete Carter that lives out in San Diego. Um, you guys all know him as the Reckless Rodent Guy, but just to show you, you guys can see that, right? Um, and then I'm going to use the X-Acto knife to place that eye in there, because remember we have super glue in there now, and you don't want to get the super glue all over your fingers. And then that is a really good fit, and this will kind of disappear into the background. It won't look like it does now that uh, clear coat will fill in this this eye here and I think the greens a good choice because we, we do have green on the bottom of this lure so now let's get in some clear coat I've got a couple others to dip with this so we're gonna just drop this into KBS uh, the biggest trick with this with KBS 
couple things you need to know if you guys are new to KBS first thing I do is I transfer I get it in the quart size it's about fifty six dollars a quart uh, I transfer it into glass jars that have a screw lid and between the lid and the threads I keep saran wrap and you want to tighten that down as tight as you can get it you want to stretch this saran wrap across the top of this like a drum so you want to get it as tight as possible and then screw that down onto the threads as tight as possible so we've got these that I we started the video out with these sassy gills we're going to drop that down just doing a total of three and you'll notice about if you want to pay attention to the speed that I'm working at with this KBS and you, there's no need to spin it matter of fact spinning this would be a bad idea because it has a tendency to pick up air bubbles this stuff is meant to be hung and let gravity take its course now the other thing you want to kind of pop these bubbles through there's occasionally you'll get where the eye sockets are and your eyes are put in inserted you'll get a couple of air bubbles and if they don't pop on their own then just take your drip wire uh, from your tail eyelet before you put that on there and just gently pop those out and then I just leave this to hang and obviously I've got my I've got my uh, catcher underneath it's just paper it's paper probably out of an Amazon box and here comes the part you guys are curious about with this we're gonna dip it slow we're gonna drop this all the way in and I may have shown you this before but it is it's been my number one question for the tips and tricks and I don't leave that in long and I let that dissipate and let gravity pull it as much as it can and then here's the here's the trick right here you take your tail drip wire and slide it through these slits in the gills and pull just gently pull because this is wet pull your excess out of the slits on the side and if you do that you will not have a single problem with these clogging that's all I'm doing here is I'm just sliding the, I'm pushing this through because there's still enough clear coat on this mouth plate right here where you're not going to have an issue and then just pull the excess out of the side right here and those two things right there will prevent you from having your clear coat clog up and then just add that tail drip wire on and let it let gravity take its course and that's exactly what it should look like and you can see the fluid coming off of that and if you guys didn't know to do that and if you guys are having problems with buildup at the base of your lure add that drip wire to your tail eyelet and those are the basic tips and trips that <laughs> and those are the basic tips and tricks that I'm going to go over today leave comments and questions for me though leave stuff like hey I need you to answer this can you show me in a video if you do that that's going to bring that to my attention that I want to put it in the next one because we're going to continue the tips and tricks as we go through I try and add them into every video that I do um, but in the I can't get to everything in one video because usually that's uh, I try and average between 25 and 35 minutes per video which I think is more than enough that's like a 30 minute show on TV with no commercials well actually sometimes you guys do get commercials I guess don't you but I sure do appreciate each and every one of you thank you guys so much for watching this afternoon I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend or whenever it is that you guys are watching this video leave me some comments below I answer every single one for now I don't know if I'm always going to be able to continue that because thanks to you guys we keep growing that numbers I'm almost to 5,000 subscribers I really 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 
appreciate you guys and I hope that I'm able to teach you a little bit of what I know I don't know it all uh, but I always try and give you as many resources as I can for example on Facebook go to the Brotherhood of Crust Custom Crankbait Painting you can go to Topwater Underground Custom Crankbait Techniques Garcia Rose has got a foiling um, sub sub not subscription but he's got a foiling group on Facebook as well which is also fantastic Lure Me and Custom Crankbaits Jonas Summers over at Lure Color Studios in Australia there's just a myriad of people that are willing to share the knowledge like I do and that's how I got started because people were willing to do that for me so I want to kind of pay that forward I hope you have a great day thanks for watching and we'll see you on the water happy casting